Welcome everybody to Lister Games. I am Pino at the Lister. This is a new series that I'm working on. Yeah, as you guys know, I like to do top tens, but it's been a little stagnant lately. So I figured, why not react to other people's top tens with like something like this? So I'm gonna get videos sent in on very really whatever subject you want. If I want to do it, I'll do it. Mostly video games, music, movies, entertainment type stuff. But the first one here is Watch Mojo's Top 10 Final Fantasy Games. So we're going to watch this and we're going to pause uh, in between some stuff and kind of talk about it and analyze what they think the Top 10 Final Fantasy Games of all time are. Uh, here we go. Back at the video game franchise that immersed us into the oh, world, wow. or worlds of chocobos, airships, and spiky haired guys with enormous swords. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Final Fantasy games. There we go. We're in the midst of putting together the top 10 JRPGs of all time. And due to our one game per franchise rule for I don't know what they're going to have on this list. I think I've probably seen it before. I have my favorites, of course, so we'll see how, uh, how that reacts. But they must have Final Fantasy in the title to be eligible. Or interacts, as it were. 12, huh? Number 10, Final Fantasy 13. Okay. Final Fantasy 13. I played through... The, the first two of those. Uh, the game introduces players to the world of not the third one, Lightning Final Returns. Fantasy. Definitely a different game, divisive, of course, but I think that's every Final Fantasy. It's pretty much like that. Saz. Oh, I guess spoilers. If you haven't played some of these, they might... Uh, they were not as good as this game, but to be frank, he's this right. barely squeaked its way onto the list thanks to issues with its combat system and extremely linear gameplay. Linear gameplay is okay though, you know. I think a lot of times people get caught up in that. Oh my God, it's not open world. That's the the thing that we're looking for nowadays is totally open world. But I tell you, you take me through a game, even if it's super linear, if it's good, what what's the difference, right? Fantasy 3. I personally have never played Final Fantasy 3. Uh, that was not released in the U.S. for quite a while. Yeah. 2006 that was released for 3DS or DS or whatever it was. So no opinion here, so I can't really love it or hate it at that point. Looks fun. Story arcs, but the game makes up for this with the introduction of a job system with a choice of okay. three jobs for each party member, unlocking potentially unlimited party customization. So I might be in the minority when it comes to job system type stuff, and I know a lot of games kind of I don't want to say force that on you. I don't mean it like that. They they kind of make it where you have to kind of play along with that system to go along with it. I'm more of a these characters do these specific things because that's just how they are type of thing rather than I can take a mage and turn it into a fighter or a, a cleric or a summoner or anything like that. Number eight, Final Fantasy IV. Wow, okay. Number eight? Ugh. All right. So this list is going to get uncomfortable. That's one of my favorites. Um, I'd probably put that at number three or four for me. Maybe five on its worst day. So I know it seems eight is not that far off. But there's, there's going to be some stuff ahead of this that definitely shouldn't be ahead of this. Released as Final Fantasy II in North America, the fourth installment in the franchise can be considered responsible for the series' subsequent success. Yeah, because it's really good. Many of the elements it introduced became staples for future titles, such as its active battle system and its standard class designations for all its main characters. 
the game also brought I just said that the characters that the franchise hadn't yet experimented with following the story of the Dark Knight Cecil Cecil feels that he has lost his humanity for following unjust orders by his king and starts a quest for redemption to undo the evil he had a hand in causing king's orders or no there's this one of the first games I've played that had a a really amazing story like that like RPGs kind of had like their dialogues and their characters and their NPCs and shit like that but this game had emotions and you know incredibly good music and stuff like that so I mean, again eight Ooh. number seven final fantasy 12 okay so there's your first example i don't know how final fantasy 12 is ahead of final fantasy 4 this title marks a time when final fantasy developers attempted to experiment a bit outside of their tried yeah and tested a and bit formula along with a realistic character design the game adopted an mmorpg style of combat prompting a switch away from the traditional turn-based style the franchise had become so familiar with. Yeah, that game introduced gambits and... I don't want to say more strategic gameplay, because some of the old stuff had that as well, but just a really... And, I, and full disclosure, I've played through this game two or three times at this point. It's not a bad game, but it's, it's just not very good either. Characters are kind of eh. Main character especially, meh. That type of thing going on. Seven? No. Alright, I'm just mad about Final Fantasy IV still being at eight. Hey, Vaughn. Vaughn sucks. Amelia's kingdom after it was conquered by the Arcadian Empire, complete with cinematic airship battles. But, let's be honest, the real stars of this game were the Sky Pirates, Balthier and Fran. I'm checking the engine room. Right. Fran, with me. Number six, Final Fantasy VIII. So I'm probably in the minority about this game as well, but it's also one of my favorites, but I know a lot of people don't like it. The combat system and the leveling system kind of threw a lot of things off. Uh, I don't know how volume is going to go on this. Hopefully you can hear me over the video. I guess on the surface, that's kind of a really weird game. Players follow the story of a group of candidates of the military. It is a, uh, it's just one of those ones I grew up with and kind of know the ins and outs of everything on it. I've played it probably a dozen or two times at this point from beginning to end. So I'm okay with it's, it's okay being at six. I'm just, I'm glad it's on there. A lot of people don't even put this on their top 10 Final Fantasy game list, which is y'all are wrong. All right. So. There's that. Siege. In their goal, to stop the sorceress Ultimacia. The unconventional draw and junction system was adopted as the new style of gaining abilities and powering up characters, assisting the series in moving away from its traditional leveling systems. Yeah, it assisted the series, but that's really like number five, Final Fantasy Tactics. Like the only one that did it like that. And you could definitely break the game with that system, which some people might dismiss a game oh you can just beat it super super easily no it's it wasn't that it was super easy if you knew what you were doing you kind of felt like you're more master of the domain type of thing uh moving on tactics i am not a tactical person but i know a lot of people love this game so i'm just gonna let this one play out y'all can have this one i wish it wasn't so high but here we go Be a jerk and fast forward. Ran over with full <laughs> the game returned back to its 32 bit roots, but combined it with 3D isometric battlefields, rendering a whole new style the franchise hadn't seen yet, along with an unforgettable class system. I mean, that's. If I was going to play a, takes place in the a game like that, that would probably be the one I'd play, just because of familiarity with setting and characters and things like that, but. I don't see that happening anytime soon. The game received a retelling in 2007. I'm just not a tactical guy. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you, think, do you think Titra might be watching this same sunset? I don't. Number four, Final Fantasy Nine. Okay. So we haven't done this yet in the whole video. I meant to do this anytime I really paused and talked about anything. 
Final Fantasy IX. A lot of people think this is the best one ever. I personally, Pino the Lister, have tried to get through that game at least five or six times, and it just does not hold my attention. I don't know if that's because I'm older now and this type of thing isn't as magical as it used to be, but I will give you that it is a good game. And I switched right in the middle of that. So this is the first one of these. So leave me alone. <laughs> Or tell me what you like and don't like. I get a feeling the volume is going to be an issue. Nice installment sought to go back to cartoony character designs that reference the retro entries and even feature some returning characters, such as Garland from the first Final Fantasy game. Well, Garland never used Flair, okay? So he's leveled up a little. What begins with a theater troupe plotting to kidnap the Princess Garnet turns into an even bigger quest where each character has to struggle with their own identity. Overall, the game serves as a nice nostalgia blast for longtime fans. But one thing still feels weird that bizarre Coca Cola tie in commercial. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Number three, Final Fantasy X. All right, so we're into the nitty gritty here. Anybody that is a Final Fantasy fan knows what is after these Final Fantasy X, blank, blank. Uh, a certain viewer of mine is going to argue that there's a game missing from this list, but if we check the, yeah, if we check the date on the video, this game, it wasn't out yet. So Cloud Art, relax. Okay. I get it. It's the best game ever. Final Fantasy X, near and dear to me. My favorite Final Fantasy, I will admit probably not the best Final Fantasy, but is my favorite game. First one on PS2. Into the age of full 3D and right. And voice acting, as it was the first like this guy's saying. On the PS2. Hi, guys. Uh, howdy. In the world of Spira, a colossal monster known as Sin has ravaged the world for centuries. And it falls upon Titus, who unexpectedly arrives in Spira, to guide Yuna on her pilgrimage to defeat Sin. This game just gave us so much. So much. You know, I was a, a pretty, oh, pretty big gamer in the Final Fantasy era. Still am, but Final Fantasy X was a was a big one for me. I got it for my birthday for my wife's dad, so it holds a special place in my heart. He's not around anymore, so because it is, it is worth it. Final Fantasy VII at number two. At number two. What can I say about Final Fantasy VII? I think the guy just said it. Uh, how many of you out there started with Final Fantasy VII as your first ever Final Fantasy game? I didn't. Number one, original, I think, is what I started with, which obviously isn't going to be on this list, but... What else is there to be said about the fans don't already know? From its influence on the narrative, its combat system, and some really fun mini games throughout the adventure, Final Fantasy VII did it all to. You see me looking like this? It's because I'm looking to make sure I zoomed out on my ugly mug to show you the game and the video. With too many memorable moments to mention. I wonder if I get sued for making videos like this. It's no question as to why this is the best-selling game in the franchise. Yeah, that game's awesome. I mean, there's so much stuff that came from that. Like the guy said, movies, countless spinoffs, now a remake, and a second remake is going to be coming pretty soon, you know, soon-ish type of thing. But, you know, that's that's a lot of people's favorite, a lot of nostalgia there. I can't, can't argue with that one. But the real number one, as I think we all know, ooh, he got me. Honorable mentions. And you, stay back. Yep, I play, I play me some 14. Can't argue with that. Eh, Dissidia. Dissidia is almost like uh, tactics for me. Like, if I played it, it's only because it's got Final Fantasy characters in it. Easy. Five looks like four. So it's probably fun. 
Final Fantasy VI. Duh. We're letting him talk. He knows. Now, this vote was close, and we mean really close between six and seven. In the end, it was ultimately the sixth installment that won out to be the unsurpassed title in the series. Originally released as Final Fantasy III in North America, the game was the last to be released on the SNES, and yet it was way ahead of its time. Very much so. This was in part thanks to a diverse and colorful cast of characters, the elaborate summons, compelling storyline filled with amazing cinematic moments, oh, that opera sequence, and of course, the greatest villain in the series in the form of Kepka Palazzo. Yep. The only one to actually succeed at destroying the world. I mean, when you're like 12 years old, Unprecedented role -playing experience and you're playing that, that's, I mean, that, that gets you. That kind of stuff stays with you. Well, we don't agree with your list. So, that was their list for top 10 Final Fantasy games of all time. Uh, mostly okay. There was a few, a few issues there. But overall, not too bad. Watch Mojo does a pretty good job. I think Final Fantasy VIII should have been higher. I think twelve should not even be on the list, probably. But that is just my opinion, and that's, I think, what you guys are here for. So this was the first episode of Keynote Reacts. Uh, send me another video. Send me something else. Send me game music, Final Bosses, gangster movies from the 90s something. All right. Thanks for watching.